I started birding when I was seven years old. It seems like yesterday. I remember getting my first book real excited and going out into the field to try and identify all the birds that I was seeing. Coming back and looking at my book, but there was a problem. Reality didn't look like the book. I guess things really haven't changed much, much today. Books today, we, we open them up and we have a plate, probably painted, with a bird up real close with a nice white background. Looks very nice. But how useful is it? We get a photographic guide. The bird's beautifully taken, real large, fantastic colours with a flat background. That's not what I see behind me. I see birds that are a long way off, small, in nature's beautiful habitat, with beautiful colours, but a small thing moving around just like we do. In fact, birds are really just like us when we describe people. We say, you know, he's six foot tall, he weighs about 200 pounds, pretty slim, athletic, he loves birding, or taking photographs, or playing sports, you often see him down the boozer at night. You know, so it's size, shape, behaviour, probability. The one thing we really don't talk about is colour. In birding we do, but too much. So we want to de-emphasise colour because it is so variable. All the different plumages, light, it's the other things we want to emphasise. But books right now in their present format just don't do that. So I wanted to go and make that perfect book. Just like everybody else. All I needed to do was get photographs of nearly 700 species near, far, in between, in lifelike poses, in habitat that is just like we're in right now. So I did that. It took a while. Massive learning curve. Then I got back and I tried to make those into pages. Again, just replicating reality. What I consider fundamental to making these scenes work is that they're in focus. The reason that is the case is because we see birds small in real life as I've already mentioned so it's important to see them in context but the fact that I also have birds up very large and birds in intermediate sizes it helps us to really understand better how they change. We can see patterns by doing this. Patterns and size, patterns of shape, patterns of colour. It, it brings clarity to this and this is really how I see birds. I see them as a shape with a very simple pattern of colour. The difference between a beginner and an expert is simply the expert has mastered these better. Um, practice makes perfect. I always preach that to my kids. And this, these scenes enable you to practice all of the time. If you keep looking at the scenes, whether you really know it or not, subliminally you will be taking in more information and hopefully you will be simplifying this information in a manner that you can really understand that then becomes practical in the real world. When I started with this book, one thing I wanted to do was to make it interactive and educational. Just about every book out there is basically just a reference guide. I wanted it to be almost like reality birding. Something you could sit at home, look at the book and it almost be like that you're out in the field. And if people do that, all the information is there. Mostly in those images. If you practice, keep looking at them, you'll become a better birder and start to think, hopefully just like I do. I called the book the Crossley ID Guide because it's about helping people identify birds better. I lived in Asia for a while, I was brought up in the wild British birding scene and I've lived over here in Cape May for over 20 years. So I've tried to bring all the knowledge that I've learned from these different cultures together. I put that in the introduction, not so subtly in places, but everything I have learned to help you become better birders. The pages include a map, text and the plates or scenes. Maps are always very important because they tell you where birds occur or are likely to occur and whether they come occur in summer or winter. The plates have the largest images at the bottom. They have all the different ages and sexes 
any plumage that looks substantially different from another one. We also have birds in transitional plumage. Have you ever looked in a book and you see this grey bird and next to it is this really gaudy bird and you wonder how the heck it gets from one to the other? Well we've put those birds in so it makes sense to you so you can actually see how they go from one dull looking appearance to a very bright one and vice versa of course. As you look through those large images you'll see that the birds become progressively smaller. This is to me the most important part of the book. How the bird's appearance stays the same but also differs with distance. It also gives it that sense of reality that I'm craving for and shows the habitat um, and, and creates a much clearer mental message of what, what the bird is and how it lives. Actually these small birds in the distance I consider the most important part of the book. This is what sets this book apart from others, but it's also the most accurate thing that portrays the world. That's how I see birds, and I'm sure that's how you see birds. Right now, you probably don't feel comfortable trying to identify them, but I think after looking at these plates, maybe you'll feel like it's worth a shot. You'll also notice in there, there are a lot of flight shots. People often don't like flight shots, I've heard this mentioned many times. The reason they are in there is because we actually see birds in flight just as much as sitting or swimming. And so that's very important. But also, if you really look at them closely in flight, although they're often moving fast and they're a long way away, they actually look just the same. They're the same size, the same shape, the same proportions and the same patterns of colour. Just sometimes a little harder to see. I've already heard some comments that I haven't labelled every bird. How could I do that? Well, I often give the analogy. If my kids came home from school and they say, Dad, I had this great day at school. The teacher let me sit at the back of the class and gave us the answer to every single question. I didn't do a thing. How do you think I'd feel? Probably like you. Not real good, eh? So the best thing is, is to get involved in the book and work out the answers yourself. Again, you'll become a lot better birder. You'll even notice in some pages includes four species, or two species. I put in there proportional representation. It always seemed crazy to me that a bird that occurs rarely gets as much space as something that occurs in everybody's back garden. So I've tried to bring some logic to that. The goal was to create the book that I wanted, hoping that you would want it. It's taken a number of years. I've uh, I've basically dedicated my life to it and uh, I've learned massive amounts, success or fail, it will have always been worth it. But I think ultimately it will change the way that people look at birds and the way that we look at books. I hope that, I guess I dream that, but ultimately only you can decide that.